we are exposed on a regular basis to 100,000 chemicals every single day. It depends on the spew, where you are, and I do mean a spew because it's a toxic spew. Uh, and most of these, most of these have never been tested for human safety. We're the guinea pigs for uh, a, an experiment that is way out of control. And this is one of the reasons that we have high rates of cancer, although right now cancer is number two, superseded by uh, heart cardiovascular problems, which is now number one, and asthma, which I will mention later, is number three. In addition, there are 8,000 new chemicals that go online every year to which we're all so exposed. 8,000. These two have never been tested for human safety. Chemicals in pharmaceuticals are tested one at a time, and because the way things are right now, there are very few independent labs and few independent scientists. So a lot of this is, uh, as I say, the fox is uh, guarding uh, a scenario that's really pretty awful. And we have known really since the 30s, particularly for issues surrounding women's reproductive problems, that tampons were safe were unsafe in the 30s, but a lot of things are covered up, and that has not changed in 70 years. So having uh, the pharmaceutical companies test things or the chemical companies test things doesn't necessarily mean that we're safe if something's put online. Uh, in, additional, in addition, uh, these uh, safety factors that the chemical and the pharmaceutical companies uh, test for, it doesn't really, they're testing one chemical at a time. This does not address what Dr. Theo Colburn in our Stolen Future in 1996 addressed, and that is it's multiple. And one chemical plus one chemical does not equal two. One chemical plus one chemical could equal, especially in hormone disrupting chemicals, 1,600 times the dose and we're all walking time bombs. That is a reality. Everybody in this room, Bill Moyers did a great, great show about six years ago called Trade Secrets, uh, which is still available, I believe, on DVD, looking at this whole issue of uh, the multiplicity of chemicals and the problems that, uh, the problems, I should say, of greed uh, have caused for Americans. And as I write in The Uterine Crisis, it's all about greed. It's not about our well-being and safety. And there are countless stories about the problems of people who have become critically ill or died, stories going back to the thalidomide crisis in the 60s and 70s, toxic shock syndrome, pesticide poisonings, which are really off the scale, even for small children and Vioxx, just to name a few. It was on the market when they knew it was unsafe and people were spending a fortune so that the companies could make billions of dollars. We are the guinea pigs in a huge and complex experiment where the health and environmental repercussions are absolutely staggering. Babies are now born with what is called the body burden. That is, while they're growing in utero in their mom's bodies, they are already getting a chemical body burden that is passed on through the umbilical cord. And so by birth, these poor, innocent children are already affected. And there are staggering rates of birth deformities, cancers, and other reproductive-related illnesses that we did not have 20 or 30 years ago. When I was growing up, there was no such a thing as a children's hospital. Think about it. We have children's hospitals all over. What has happened? What has happened? Just think about that figure. What does 100,000 chemicals mean in a mixture that is not even being tested in its vast mathematical complicity? This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.